In this chapter, we are going to focus about repetition, constructs, functions, variable scope, objects and object oriented programming. So this is like a second section, which we will have an overview about repetition, constructs, functions, variable scope and many more. So let's have a look like with each and every example over here, like what is repetition, constructs all about, functions all about, variable scope, objects and object oriented programming. So it is important to understand each one of them because they all conceptualize as the JavaScript programming practices. So let's have a look with each of these example in our JS shell. So this is my shell. So here I'm going to start with repetition construct, which is nothing but a conceptualization of while loop and do while loop. So I'll start with the variable declaration, say variable one. So this is my variable which is number, I'm declaring one, I'm getting the value of one over here. Now, after this, I'm going to do a repetition construct over here. So repetition construct will involve some kind of looping structure. So let's start with this funda. So I'll say variable sum equal to some value. So my value will be zero. Now, after that, I'll say while, I'll do a while loop. So my sum I'm getting as the value of zero. So after, inside while I'll say while number less than 11 then I'll call for some loopings to construct so sum plus equal to which means that I'm iterating my sum value equal to number and then I put uh, another condition that my number will keep on increasing so it will be number which is like plus plus number so this ends my while loop so after that, I'm going to do one thing is to print my sum value. So I need to print the value, whatever it is like, according to the print condition, it should be like I get one. So I should enter till my condition, like if it is less than my number is less than 11. So I'm getting the value as 11, which means that my iteration is done like zero plus 11 equal to 11. So if I call for some other condition say for for loop so i'll do again a variable declaration like where number equal to one and sum equal to zero now inside that i'll say for and inside for i'll say number variable number will be defined as one and the value over here so it is variable number as one and I'm going to specify the condition like number less than 11, number plus plus. It's like I'm iterating my number value over here. So it will be number plus plus. And then I'll specify for the condition inside sum. So I'll say sum plus equal to number. And inside that, I'll close my for loop. So I get the value as 55. Now, if you get to know 55 is like it is iterating as per your Fibonacci series. So that is the difference basically between while loop and for loop. We almost get the condition as a similar, but inside while loop, there is one thing that it only checks that, okay, fine. My condition is satisfying that my number is less than 11. But for for loop here, it verifies whether it is proper or not. Like it iterates your Fibonacci series. Like it will be in such a manner like 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 and it reaches the point 11 and it is printing up the value as 55. So that is the Fibonacci series constraint over with the help of for loop. So this was the iterative constraint with the like we can see the repetitive constructs that we have for while loop as well as for loop. This is with respect to my uh, understanding like with respect to javascript like we have this section which is the repetitive construct so as per your repetitive construct you can design the module the way you need it like how what all functionalities you need to repeat as per your understanding your requirements and this can differ it can be within a while loop or it can be within the for loop so that is the basic difference between both of them because for loop takes the repetition constructs automatically. Moving on to the next thing that is the functions. So we had a look like we will also understand about the functions thing. So functions are nothing but like it 
means to define both value returning function as well as which does not return a value. So let's start with the one that is the function factorial, which I'm doing right now. So factorial is nothing but product of the uh, like the decrement value till one. So if I say factorial six or say factorial three, so it will be three into two into one. So I'll follow the same logic over here. Here I've declared a variable that is where product equal to I. And then I say for here I give the condition I equal to number and I less than or equal to one because it decrements till the value of one. The main logic behind factorial that is three into two into one like for three factorial. Now I will decrement it. So I'll say minus minus I and then I'll start for my loop and inside my loop I'll specify product and the product will be multiplied with i. So if it is I'm sending a parameter say 3, so inside 3 it will should go like 3 into 2 into 1. So that is the uh, major functionality with respect to factorial. Now I've done with this part. So this was the understanding like uh, it should work as per my for loop functionality. So now I'll say return product. So returning product will return my value and I'll put an enter. So accordingly, I should get a value that number should print the value as per the need. Suppose if I say print with the factorial of three or say four. So now if I say like I'm printing a factorial of some specified number, it can be any number say for four or say for three. So now I'm saying three instead of four. So in here, I should get the value like three into two into one as six. So this is what it gets, like I'm getting the value as six. So this means my logic is perfectly implemented inside the functions, like my factorial for any number, if I print it, so it will get it automatically. So all function parameters in JavaScript are passed by value and there are no reference parameters as well. So however, there are reference objects such as arrays, but here it is a singleton function. So it is like only one parameter is sent, that is the number. So this was about understanding in the functions logic, like how the functions are implemented in the JavaScript section. So moving on to the next part, the major part is about understanding the various variable scopes. The scope of variable refers to where in a program a variable value can be accessed. Scope of variable in JavaScript is defined as a function scope. So this means that a variable's value is visible within a particular. Say for example, if I say where product equal to one. So this is the scope which is within this particular function. So it is not a global variable. It is a local variable. That is the basic difference between a global and the local. If you define this product outside your particular JavaScript element. So in such a scenario, it happens as, as the global variable instead of the local variable. So when a variable is defined outside a function in the main program, the variable is said to have a global scope. Whereas if it is defined inside a particular function, then it is automatically said to have a local scope. So this was about the variable scope. The next is about understanding the major concept like objects and object oriented program. So object and object oriented programming is like JavaScript supports this kind of a structure. So JavaScript provides me various ways for creating and using objects. So this is the main section where we need to understand like why objects are done. So objects are created, say for example, in this function. So I'm just creating a function over here, say checking amount. So it is like an amount which is I'm passing as the parameter. Inside this, if I say this dot balance, so this dot balance refers to the balance of my ob uh, of a particular object in the specified class. So here amount is the parameter which is it is redirecting to the object element. So it is like object, uh, it's like JavaScript supports this functionality of the object implementation. Like it has this class structure as well as the objects defined in it. So this was about understanding with respect to object oriented programming in JavaScript. Moving on to the next chapter will be the complete understanding like starting with the basic introduction of the 
data structures and then analyzing with the every implementation like now we had a look about recursive constructs we had a look about object oriented programming also the functions but each one of them will have the implementation in the further chapters like understanding the data structures and implementing each of these data structures in javascript module so let's move on to our next chapter